I've seen a lot of hair drawing tutorials on YouTube that really only apply to straight hair. And those have been useful, but there's so many different hair types out there to learn. Now, I can't fully cover every hair type in the curly range, but these fundamentals are useful regardless for like the 2C to 3B kind of range. I'm using a reference photo of yours truly, but of course you can practice with whatever works best for you. There are three main steps in my curly hair sketching process. The meat, the pasta, and the sauce. I'll get into what all that actually means. Let's start with a basic head shape to work off of, and then mark the position and shape of your hairline. Okay, now for the meat. So the meat are the larger three-dimensional structures that make up the general form of the hair. In reality, they're of course made out of smaller strands of hair, but we're focusing on the large three-dimensional shapes. All these shapes are sitting on top of each other. You can have longer shapes that resemble strands but aren't exactly strands. You can have these larger rectangular sort of obular kind of shapes, and they're all coming out from the hairline and from sections physically on the head and they exist in 3d space in front of each other sitting on top of each other behind each other and that's the most important thing is to envision the hair as a series of three-dimensional shapes that interact with each other in a way that makes the hair look the way that it looks Now that you have the meat, you gotta mix in the pasta. And this is where the hair is really gonna start to look right. You're gonna be breaking your big meat shapes up into smaller curly shapes. Keep in mind that these are not lines, they are 3D objects that fill these individual meat spaces. You're gonna have roughly three types of curls. These squiggly ones, the coils, and miscellaneous strands if your hair reference isn't perfectly uniform. Different parts of the hair, with reference or not, will have varying levels of tightness. Tighter, cur curls coil tighter curls coil and curve more confidently, that's a tongue twister, and looser curls are going to cascade more through to the bottom ends and sides and top of the hair. The main idea here is strikingly similar to the previous step, imagining the hair as a series of three-dimensional shapes that make up a larger whole. Except now, instead of making up the entirety of the hair, these collections of strands make up each individual shape that you made previously. If you noticed, I've taken that previous layer of the meat shapes and turned down the opacity and made a new layer to make these more detailed curls. This helps you visualize on top of what you already have and avoid cluttering up the image. A uh, quick note here, if you notice I'm leaving sort of large sections of blank space in the image. This is because if you look at my reference image of my hair here, a lot of it, it doesn't have a lot of detail. Like it has the detail, but you can't see most of it super prominently because it's in a lot of shadow. So I'm not going to add in line art for that because it would clutter up the image. So instead I leave it blank and sort of just allude to the shapes of it. And then later on in the sauce section, we're going to shade those areas a lot more darkly so that it resembles what it actually looks like in the image and it justifies the lack of detail that we have. Just, it, it's values, the sauce is shading and values and highlights and all that fun stuff. So I take like a mid-neutral color, it has a little bit of saturation. I'm using purple here, but obviously just use the color of the hair that you're drawing. And I'm filling the entire space that we've created with that on a layer below the previous layer that we made. Then I'm going to be taking a darker brush somewhere in between the value of your highlight and the, or the value of your line art and the value of the neutral color you just selected. And I'm turning that to about 30 or 50% opacity. And I'm just sort of shading the darkest areas that I've made with this brush. And it still has a neutral amount of shadow because we've turned the opacity down so much. So once you've shaded the areas that are most hit by shadow, you're going to really go in again with that brush and shade the darkest possible areas in the image to get that really primary contrast that's going to get the primary shapes of the hair. And eventually you'll see the shading of the hair start to take place just with uh, this one flat and round brush on 30% opacity. Then after this, you go over to your neutral color, color select it, and then go and uh, turn it up to a highlight color, back down to 30 or 50% opacity, make the size of your brush a little bit smaller, and then follow the contours of the areas of the hair according to your reference image that are being hit by light the most, and then this will create the highlight shapes of your hair.
And that's essentially the sauce section. And if you notice, just with a lot of pretty simple instruction and action, you've created a very convincing likeness of human hair. It's, of course, in my image, it's quite stylized and it's not heavily realistic, but it's showing you the fundamentals of how making curly hair is going to end up working out um, in illustrative styles. I hope this was helpful. Um, obviously, I'm not an expert in illustration, but I wanted to put something out there that portrays a good way to learn how to draw curly hair because I feel like there isn't enough of this going around on YouTube. Of course, again, this doesn't apply to every curly hair type, and I'm sure there's tons of stuff here that isn't going to apply to a lot of people's hair, um, but I feel like it would be ill-advised to try to get to everything, especially since I'm not really um, the right kind of person for all of that. But I hope that what is here is useful, and I hope that you go and draw some beautiful characters with beautiful curly hair. Thank you.